All right, so this is going to be Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Moon, and as well Scorpio Rising. A weekly general tarot reading, January 26th to uh, February 2nd, 2020. And uh, in case any of you guys want to get in touch with me for a personal reading, uh, you can check out the description down below of this video. And uh, there you are going to find a, a link to my website. Uh, that being said, we are going to move into the reading right now. This is going to be a, a string reading, meaning no positions whatsoever. Seven cards in a row, whatever they show, they show. It doesn't get any general than that. And the reading can be all over the place because they can show completely different things. Okay. Or completely different aspects of your um, of your week. So first one here uh, that shows the hangman Scorpio or for us, that is. So the hangman, it kind of um, we are starting quite heavy on the week here with the hangman points that many of the things uh, we would like to push forward. Uh, they simply cannot be pushed forward at that particular point or our efforts to do so are going to prove themselves rather futile. Now, why? With the hangman, the conditions that we need in order those um, enterprises to be pushed forward are not uh, ours to decide. What I mean is that those conditions, they reside to someone else or elsewhere that we have no control upon. So with the hangman, the card is simultaneously a breakthrough and a test of faith, if you will, the test of faith of faith. So we have to, we need to have the patience to wait for the right circumstances to happen or the circumstances to develop and a breakthrough as well, because the hangman points the scars, the disguise darken are going to be set into light again and the only thing that we have to do is wait okay so uh, basically that card is a sign that whatever we are slogging into to make it happen is going to happen on its own accord and we don't have to do anything about it all right so just that card here it is a, a reminder that we have to just take it easy it is what it is okay and we can't influence it in any way so let it leave to unfold the way it is supposed to unfold moving forward into the future. Now, the second card that we do have it is the tower card and the tower points that we also will have to face some rather quite unpleasant circumstances or circumstances that are accompanied with unpleasant symptoms, if you will. The tower is the card that uh, uh, makes one to undergo a, a certain um, transformation. To be honest, I don't like what I am seeing here, okay? It will be a rough week for us, guys. And uh, uh, basically, we are going to be forced to do things in a different way, to think in a different way as well, or to rebuild certain structure into our lives. So now the tower card, as it is a rather uh, unpleasant card to go through, its result, its uh, result, it's always a cleansing and healing for our life that is. So the tower card, uh, its manifestation may refer to actually endless type of things. It could refer to crush that we are going to have thinking that we're never going to fall in love with someone else, for example. It could refer as well, uh, many, many times the card came up into my readings as an unplanned pregnancy. Okay. It may come as a, a being fired from the work, you know, it may come in a many, many different gazes. So the least things that we are expecting, they may manifest throughout that week and is going to make us, you know, think and act in a very different way. So as much as I don't like to say it, we Scorpio, we need to be prepared for the worst throughout uh, this week, January 26th to February 2nd, 2020. And uh, uh, another thing with the tower is, is that we should not rely too much on a specific, specific people or a specific resources because at this is where exactly the tower may hit that we once we rely on them and we count on them and suddenly you know we can't count on them but we already have made our plan revolving around them and we can't and you know it's it's a disaster and uh, we have to manage that crisis one or the other way. Now, the third card that we do have, it is the Tree of Pentacles. And this kind of gives a little bit of a hope, 
here um, as a follow-up of these two cards. The card points that there are going to be many people to help us move through that rather unpleasant period of time. Most of them are going to criticize us, all right, telling us what we haven't done right and how we should fix that and etc, etc. Now that criticism has a lot of truth into it, so we should not be quick to judge criticism as a negative criticism, but instead we should judge it as a constructive criticism. Three of Pentacles points that this week, the majority of it, we are to spend it into a, a very meaningful conversation sled with those who are more experienced than us in what we are trying to develop. And as we are seeing here, we are failing colossally with it. Okay, and in the same time, when you when these people see that you that we Scorpio are listening to them, they are going to give us the support we require in order to grow and in order to develop, in order to stabilize after the crisis that we are going to go into at the start of the week here. And above everything else, the Three of Pentacles points to a, a cooperation, meaning that these people will, are going to be once again willing to help us cooperate with us so we can overcome these unpleasant circumstances uh, or unpleasant symptoms that the circumstances are bringing to us and reach that point of nurture and healing as soon as possible. Now, the fourth card that we do have, it is the lover's card. Now, it does not fit very well with the previous three cards, so I'm going to go with it by its uh, traditional meaning, which is uh, attraction in between the perfectly matching opposites, okay? And that uh, may very well refer to falling in love, all right? But if that's the case, it will be falling in love into a person that at that point, you cannot be together because you are perfectly matching opposites, okay? Everything that you despite or that you despise, it will be that person and vice versa. So you are opposite in every way and yet you are attracting each other. And that's kind of like something that neither can explain, and that's why it's the true love. It is because you can't explain it. It doesn't make any sense, but it is there. And that is the prime evil, that is the prime love. I mean, the prime evil is when the evil doesn't make sense. People do bad stuff without putting any sense into it. That is the prime evil. People love things without making any sense into it. That is the prime love. So this is uh, something that we can look forward to throughout this week, Scorpio. But also the uh, lover's card here points that whomever we are associate ourselves with throughout the week, we are going to establish a very harmonious relationship with them. It doesn't have to be a romantic one, uh, but it should go through some sort of a flirting stage as well with the lovers. However, at the end of the day, the, lover, the lover's card promises a rather subtle um, resolution to the problems that we are having at the start of the week as well. And it is a, another confirmation here that the problems we have are likely to resolve themselves on their own accord. So we should not once again a, be quick with our judgment and quick with our decision, not just only decision making here guys, but as well actions to uh, try to fix everything around because we can't, okay? it will be fixed on its own accord. Now, the fifth card for us is going to be the Wheel of Fortune. And it's it's quite of a, uh, um, it's quite of a turn here that we do have. So the week is gonna be like a climbing a mountain, okay? We do start from the bottom of it, from the bottom of the summit. And at the end, probably we are gonna find ourselves at the top of the summit. Because the Wheel of Fortune, it's uh, the card pointing that we are going to have a once in a lifetime opportunity throughout this week for to manifest something we very much want. It is just how the card works, all right, on its own accord, because once again, this is a string reading and we do, we do interpret the cards, how they manifest themselves on their own accord, all right? So with that particular sense, the Wheel of Fortune represents once in a lifetime opportunity to make change for the better and for good into our life. However, it does bring a lot of a uh, 
business. What I mean, it is that you can expect to be busy into your uh, career. You can expect to be as well. And that's how I, uh, I am sure that as hell as no, I am going to be quite busy this week because I have so much to do in terms of my career is not even funny. I don't know how to, how I'm going to manage it, but it does look like that I will be able to. And, uh, Additionally to that, it speaks that you're going to be quite busy in terms of relationships If you, in case you do have such to answer to a lot of calls, to a lot of enterprises, be everywhere that you have been requested. This is what the Wheel of Fortune I'd kind of points. But the good thing with the Wheel of Fortune it is that counteracts the, um, the hangman. All right. Uh, while at the start of the week we're gonna feel blocked and like whatever we do, it doesn't produce any results whatsoever. The Wheel of Fortune points that the blockage we are experiencing up until this moment is gonna simply drop, and now we are gonna feel free, and our situation is gonna stir uh, to an exponential points. The sixth card here that we do have it is the star card and that is the counteract of the uh, tower card. The star card kind of points that uh, the time of turmoil and the, the, the times of turmoil and the times of problems are now over and we can have a, a clear sight upon the future and when we do so we are to see that the future actually holds the, the best there or the best is yet to come. In that particular case, the star card represents unconditional support. It does represents unconditional love as well. High ideals that can be reached um, as well represents a um, long-term goal and a fulcrum that one can look forward to. But the best thing about the star card it is that one can kind of like see their future uh, from an ego view, ego sights and predict how things are to develop from now on and therefore having, if you will, the accurate strategy to move on forward. So uh, once again, as well as I predicted here, guys, it does look like that the week is going to be like climbing a, a mountain, starting from the very rock bottom of it and reaching the very peak of the summit here. And if we relate the star card with uh, the lovers, that could be very well unconditional love that doesn't make any sense. So it is the true love and you know, we, we get to have ourselves involved with someone. Now, I don't wanna keep your hopes high. If that's the case, it's gonna be very, very difficult to, mani to manifest this thing. It's because you're going to be completely different from one another and the expectations are not gonna match at all. And yet you are going to be uh, attracted to one another. So it falls up to you to uh, make the thing work. And the last one is going to be the Tree of Swords here the last card and that reflects to the um i don't know how to describe it it does reflect to all the things we wanted to do or we wanted to manage at the start of the week where the crisis came around that we couldn't and uh with that particular mindset that we may end up the week it's uh it's just we may kind of like think the less out of us it's it's more like thinking that we uh, we will not be able to 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 see it through that thing that goal fulcrum that manifests itself with the star card that we are not worthy you know uh, it, it basically to think the less of us the, the less of us and of our performance moving on forward into the future. The key to the Tree of Swords and overcoming here the Tree of Swords is to, how can I say it, not, to not allow those negative thoughts of what was and what could have been to twist and tangle with, with our mind, but instead, instead of um, thinking what could B. Now, recently I watched a movie and it was a very good, kind of like a um, argument there made. And one said, as long as there are people who remember what was and what could have been, there are they never going to try to figure out or try to reach the maximum potential of what can actually be. So that's, that's our Scorpio dilemma at the end. Are we going to feel bad about 
things we could not manifest or are we going to feel optimistic or think optimistic of what we can go for from now on once that era of a turmoil and crisis is gonna end at the mid to the end of the week as the week is gonna start from the rock bottom so yeah that being said guys uh this was our weekly tarot reading for scorpio january 26 to february 2nd 2020 hopefully you enjoyed it uh and you liked it guys and uh we are going to see each other next time until then bye